Hey folks, this is Ken Berry at OB Farms. I've got the great privilege and honor of posting this set of videos in which I had the great Nick Ferguson come to OB Farms and tour the property with me and look at the things I'm doing to try to regenerate this land and turn it into a sustainable regenerative farm and ranch. We go around on my gator and we look at the different things I'm doing and he gives me his critique of what I am doing, what I should be doing, what I should not be doing. Uh, it's a little bit embarrassing in spots just because I'm a newcomer. I'm a, I'm a newbie. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. In many cases, I've read a few books and I've watched a few videos and now I'm trying to put this into practice. And Nick is such a great resource such a wealth of information that just rolls off his tongue. So sit back and relax and enjoy this series of videos as Nick Ferguson tells me everything I'm doing wrong. Enjoy. In our zone one, mm -hmm. right, we got four raised beds going and then I got four more built and ready to install. I'm gonna put them on this hillside so I can kind of utilize that loft space. Mm -hmm. And um, on the other side of our wall here, Right here, this is the south. So I've got this little microclimate. I planted some figs. Yeah. Right there, and then I got a few apples too. But the figs, they're they're Chicago and and brown turkey. But if it gets too cold here, they'll die. So hopefully that little microclimate right there will keep them keep them safe. And the, if if we have a hard winter. Yep. And yeah. thick thick mulching around the crown for the winter will get them through. Out of them. Yep. Got it. So. If you know it's going to be a really bad winter, or you're suspecting, or they get knocked back to the ground every yeah, year, yeah. you can mulch it heavy and just kind of volcano it up, yep. just to put them to bed for the winter. Yep. And then in the springtime, you can uncover it. Got it. And I just takes just a few minutes, and then you'll have uh, pre the previous year's wood, so they will um, put out fruit. Right. And most winters they go, they die to the ground here. Right. Every now and then we'll have a mild winter, and they won't. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I just got a wood chipper, so I'm gonna have plenty of mulch. I got 40 acres yep. to play with here. So nice. Plenty to keep me busy full time. I think I have eight or 10 mm -hmm. right now. And I bought this thing from Winola Ranch, mm -hmm. which when I get when I get enough, you, you put your water up here yep. and it auto waters. Mm -hmm. So basically you walk in here, collect the eggs and feed them once a day. 10 minutes you're done with your quail yeah so i'm trying to make everything i do is self-sustaining and and as quick and just quick and dirty low yep. input not a lot of mm -hmm. face time required yeah these are not japanese though. these are coternics yeah yeah and the, these this breed has been in captivity for over a thousand years so they literally would rather be because i know a lot of people are watching this but like that's so mean but these quail, if, if you let them out, they'd, they'd be dead in 10 minutes. Yeah, they'd, they'd be gone. They've been living this way for, for centuries. And so every morning I, I get about eight of these little guys. Isn't that cute? Look at that. Mm -hmm. It takes about five of these to equal one chicken egg, but they actually are more nutrient dense mm -hmm. than chicken eggs. So they How many can you raise in this system? So you can put about max of about 12 per cage. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, so 72-ish, and and so when I get, I just hatched out 20 more that just hatched out yesterday. Nice. In the incubator, and so I'll have I'll have three cages running, then I'll get my water set up. Does it stay cool enough with the heat with the fan? Yeah, with this with this yeah. little fan which I paid 5.99 for, uh, it's it stays under 85, which is kind of if it gets above 85, they start panting. And uh, then I've got this little heater that was under 20 bucks. I've got the thermostat set. If it drops below 60, it'll start to heat a little bit. So this keeps it cool enough and warm enough so that they're right in their sweet spot for laying lots of eggs. Looks like you're doing mealworms. Yeah, yeah, I've got a little, I forgot to tell you that. Yeah, I've got a little mealworm farm farm. I've been neglecting it lately, but. The nice thing is they they handle neglect pretty they dang really well. Do. Like it'll be a month and be like, oh crap. I, I've completely forgot about them. They're rocking and rolling. They're still fine, exactly, yeah. yeah. And so I feed them to the chickens, I feed them to the quail. Yeah. And then when the quail, when they age out and they're not productive, they'll, they'll become food for the guardian dog. The insect droppings are, the frass will actually 
interact with the plants yep. and make the plants think that there are insect predators and they will start releasing chemicals to defend themselves against insects before there's any insect pressure. So if you're starting plants with this this frass, they're already they're all insect. they're already like awesome. ready to go, okay, we're ready to fight. Yeah. And what I'm trying to do on the whole farm is have layers of yeah. nutrition, layers of resiliency. And so so just here, we can eat quail eggs. Yep. Or we can eat quail. Mm -hmm. Or in a in a in a shit hit the fan situation, we can eat roasted Mealy one. Yeah. 100% I would do that if I was starving, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, rhubarb. It's oh. rhubarb. And horseradish. Mm hmm. And asparagus. Yeah. Yeah. So, perennials that literally this, the asparagus will come back from the crowns for 20, 25 years. I planted about 46. Yeah. 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 And same for the rhubarb and the horseradish. They'll, they'll just keep coming back years and years and years from now. Mm hmm. And so we'll either eat ho uh, horseradish, rhubarb, and asparagus, or we'll feed it to the chickens. Turn, right. turn it into eggs. So we didn't eat any this year. We're letting it just do what it does and store as much energy as possible. Next year, we'll probably eat 10, 20% of the harvest. And then each year, we'll eat a little bit more. And I got four Ison uh, muscadine. big, big muscadines. Yep. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to train them so that I've got plenty of muscadines either for making wine for barter mm -hmm. or to sip on sure right or i can let the chickens eat them that's or right or a lot of people are like oh you know deer are gonna eat those i'm like okay then i'll eat venison that's, that's great right uh-huh yeah, yeah yeah and then this is an old apple or a pear tree that nisha's grandfather planted and it looked pretty scraggly but i pruned the crap out of it and it's, good it's got a bumper crop this year yeah i don't see any fire blight issues that's really good if you end up uh, liking the crop out of this and it, it fits in with your dietary needs and everything and, and usages, yeah. um, or you decide, hey, you know what, it's great for pigs, 100%. then um, you, can the take, you can take the calorie pair, the Bradford pair, yep. and- Use it as and you can stock. Yep, you can yep. get those yep. planted out there, yep. and then you can take cuttings off of this yep. late That's winter, exactly. stick them on there, my next project. It's the easiest thing. My next project is to learn to how, to, how to graft. My dad grafts. Learn uh, on pear because it's the easiest. It's the easiest. And then I got a, a line of brambles here that uh, Beckett loves to come up and check. And then I got, what, 21 blueberries. Awesome. And I bought the the early, mid, and late mm -hmm. so that you've got a longer blueberry season. Mm -hmm. And if we eat them, great. If not, they become eggs. That's right. Or a deer attractant. That's right. Which is good. Venison. Yes. I've cut about a thousand pine trees. Mm -hmm. I can't sell them. Nobody wants them because they're scattered out too much. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just cutting them and I'm just going to pile them up and make brush piles for the rabbits and the gophers and the bob whites. Sure. So I've got tons of pine, which is worthless. And also I think it, it shade, puts out too much shade for silvo mm -hmm. pasture and the needles are acidic. You can see how nothing wants to grow mm -hmm. there except Poison ivy. Poison ivy, right. So I'm thinning out the pines. I'm probably going to cut 90% of those. I'm going to leave a few for biodiversity. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving the wild cherries. I'm leaving the persimmons, the oaks. That is sheep and goat candy. Yeah. Now see this, Jake, that's what I was telling you. Cows wouldn't touch this, I don't think. But sheep will wear this out. And so if I've got if I've got briars and mm -hmm. and giant ragweed, I'm actually happy. Oh, giant that. ragweed is Man, ambrosia trifida is one of my favorites. That's the first thing they go to when uh -huh. I put them in a new paddock. They strip it as high as they can reach. Yep. And, and these two, but they love it. So I'm mm -hmm. happy to turn this into sheep meat, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm leaving you know white oaks. I'm leaving hickory. I'm awesome. leaving all the the good hardwood for timber, but also for acorn and hickory. Yeah, production. yeah. Because pigs love the hickory nuts that's carbohydrates that turns right, into fat right and sheep love acorns yep they can't i don't I, th I don't think they can eat fresh acorns but after they've been there a few months i think the tan is low enough because they freaking tear them up people say that they're poisonous they can't eat them fresh i've had them eat them fresh right my on, goats just, just as they're fallen them. and i've never had a problem with it yeah I've had maybe of, i'm wrong but i've well, never I've had, had a problem a lot of with people it. tell me that the wild cherries are poison poisonous yep but the deer wear them out. I've got tons of paddocks like this. Mm -hmm. What can I do to make this productive? 
It literally hasn't, it's, it was probably timbered out, what, there's a big white oak, so 30, mm -hmm. 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe an acre and a half here, maybe <clears throat> an acre, I don't know. But what, what would you do with this? Uh, same thing you have been doing, I'd probably take out about 75 to 90% of the trees yep. to open up some light. You'll have an explosion. It will just, yep. in, in a matter of two months, you'll have stuff five, six feet tall. And, it's a sheep. and then right. you throw the, the sheep and goats in there. Yep. I like to actually have sheep and goats together. People say, it, this, is, this is coming from the collective intelligence and experience of, I know dozens of people that, ra that have raised bowers or um, dorpers mm -hmm. or some combo of the two mm -hmm. for years as their livelihood. Mm -hmm. And what they all say <clears throat> is, um, a lot of the same things Greg and I, Greg Judy and I say about about fencing. Mm -hmm. um, I think he is spot on with 99% of everything I've heard him say about fencing. Everyone says the sheep want to kill themselves. <laughs> they they just they will make a beeline to something that will <clears> kill <throat> them, and the goats want to make your life hell. Yep. But for some reason, if you mix them together and you have sheep and goats mixed together, the sheep are sharpened by the intelligence of the goats, so the sheep act less stupid, mm. and the goats make your life a living hell a bit less. It okay. kind of moderates okay. them both, yep. chills them both mm. out, so I've gotten a couple goats yeah. just for the behavior you modification. let them run with the sheep. Yep, okay. running okay. together. Pine are pioneer species. They come up, they secure the environment, right. they get some shade, they build up some soil, right. Hardwoods come up underneath them, and they just grow for mm. decades. I've noticed that out when I'm cutting a pine, and there'll the, be 10 up white oaks. Yep. In, almost in a circle. And the it, they'll just be slowly, slowly growing, yeah. establishing their roots, yeah. and then when that pine gets old and dies, all the hardwoods then spring up. Mm. The, the third tier, that old growth forest, has almost no pine in it. So what we, can, we can take two different tacts with how we approach our management. We can say, we're just going to be hands off and let nature do its thing. Right. Nature is slow, slow, slow. Good, but very slow. Good, yeah, good, but slow. We can be good stewards and we can multiply that and we can make that grow, we can make that growth and recovery and building up to a healthy, stable ecosystem way, way, way faster. Successing out the forest, intentionally going through there and being the disease vector, insect vector, and doing the work of those things, dropping the stuff to the ground. We put material in Johnson Sioux bioreactors and we make literally tens of thousands of species of fungi available in spore form. And we spray that out there with the beam compost and we, we can jumpstart and we can cut 20, 60 years off the advancement of this system into a good, healthy, stable, resilient, really shock absorbing ecosystem and change it from more of a brittle thinner soil version that it is now yeah. are you a fan of running pigs in a situation like this or just go to the, the sheep and goat combo honestly if you were to go through here and just thin all this out give it about six months mm -hmm. for everything mm -hmm. to just spring up into existence and then make that a paddock i rotate through. and then make that a paddock you rotate through mm -hmm. the sheep and goats will walk down the smaller branches and they will chop and drop stuff for you mm -hmm. they'll manure it heavily mm -hmm. And that kind of, that pulsation of light and dark, light and dark, of stuff springing up and then stuff getting knocked back down, you'll have a ton of grasses and forbs the seed bank. popping up, yep. And you'll have that fertility yep. pop in there yep. and you'll see that rapidly change to more of a, this uh, edge, and then it'll change from the edge to just a lush pasture. When I'm clearing this, every, every oak, every hickory, I'm thinking of timber. Yep. But I'm also thinking of their nut production. Yeah. And so I try to trim all of them up at least 10 feet. Yep. So I've got a good, hopefully, veneer log one day, right? For Beckett mm -hmm. or one of his kids. Sure. And every time I see a leaf, I'll just pop it off so we don't develop a limb and mess up the. But then I, that's it. I'll leave them. Here's a little, uh, little helpful tip. If you're just chopping this stuff to drop it and you want it to rot, they make uh, bar oil that's in that is infused with um, wood-eating 
uh, fungal spores. Shut up. So you're inoculating what? the log as no. you're cutting it. And you can just take that and just, you know, put a couple little notches on it as you right. as you're going. Bump it as you go by. Mm -hmm. And you're inoculating. That's crazy. I'll, yeah. have to look, I'll, I'll order that tonight. I'm planting chestnuts. I'm planting black walnuts. I'm planting persimmons. Nice. In the yard. That's an old plum that her uh, grandfather planted. And you can see my mulberries I've got Yep, here. yep. I've got seven or eight mulberries, mm -hmm. which are very tasty, full of antioxidants and phytonutrients, but also chickens love them. Chickens adore them. Chickens love them, man, and so do pigs. And so I'm in my zone one yard area, I'm going to have a ton of just e cheap, easy chicken feed. Mm -hmm. And so for about a month out of the year, I, I can cut down my... Feeding, your feed bill yeah, significantly my feed by probably 80 percent for a yep. month yep yep yeah. this is a a red a red mulberry that was just there i didn't plant that so i kept it and then a big uh hickory, hickory right yeah. there this is my chicken house that's one of her grandfather's old buildings i actually bought this super expensive weigh-in box right here which yep. they're just now starting to use i thought i'd waste my money 